My hands are so sticky. Because you did it without gloves. So did Chad. Thank you very much. And I actually just about went to like go wash my hands in the water. Like, bad idea. Don't do that. Don't do that. And you know, I'm in the business of growing big fish. I got to get back after it. Our muck reducing tablets that we are broadcasting as evenly as we possibly can throughout this entire pond. So these will consume the organic material that is on the pond bottom. They are used to consume organic waste in a pond. That organic waste comes from dead algae, dead weeds, fish waste, other runoff that comes into the pond and it converts into this mushy sludge that stinks in a water body and the problem with that is that it also then feeds things like more algae blooms and harmful cyanobacteria in the water. It also creates odors and causes the water to be murky. So there's a lot of benefits to getting that muck out of the water. Patrick, I got your sediment, buddy. You do what you got to do in the name of science. Here's our sediment sample for the day. I smell so bad right now. It just, as soon as I put the bucket in the water, it just splashed up at me. Chad doesn't know I put on his boots yet. Cause then the water will settle out and we can kind of scoop the sediment more out of it then. Oh. Why I sacrificed my body for that. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we want to um, survey the invertebrate community. You know, your more t uh, pollutant tolerant species like your mayflies and dragonflies, they're not doing well. They're most likely non-existent in this pond at this point. Um, what I'm most likely going to see is probably a lot of oligochaetes, chironomids, other um, more pollutant tolerant vertebrates. So um, we're going to look at the full spectrum, not just water quality, but also the biological response as we amend the water quality and, and everything else that goes along with it. So let's yeah. dig in the dirt. I don't know what that was. I just Ew. saw. Was that part of a fish? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Patrick gets to check that in his bag. <laughs> we'll, we'll put that on cooler and then we'll, when I get back, I will s filter that through a 500 micron sieve and we will do counts. So we have a full biomass, well, at least for the shoreline area say, for invertebrates. There's sediment in there. There we go. Get that. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I just, I set it down vertically and then I did this and scooped yeah. it out. Okay, so dumb question here. You've got that dead zone, right, yeah. down there. You get a high volume of water that enters that pond. Does it take that dead stuff and remix it into it does. the water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That so that's part of, so there's a couple different things that can disturb sediments mm -hmm. and, and actually move superficial sediments. Mm -hmm. Wind speeds, so mm -hmm. if you have shallow areas, less than like eight feet, mm -hmm. if you have a high sustained that's winds, like continued right sustained winds of like, 12, 15 mile per hour winds, you can actually pick up a couple inches of sediment and move it. Distribute it. And distribute it and move it back and forth. Yeah. So basic science question here about warm and cool. If you had a 92 degree surface water temp and then you've got that four inches of 55 degree rain that comes in, does that exacerbate? Yeah, it, that will mix, mix that superficial sediments just from having the, the inversion you know, coming in. How organic matter is broken down, it releases ammonia. And mm -hmm. ammonia is the most oxygen intensive compound that you can have. Meaning um, it demands it, a so large to convert one to, to, to convert one milligram of nitrate to ammonia, which is what happens when ammonia gets yeah, released, it wants toxic. to go to goes to nitrate uh -huh. if there's oxygen. If, the, if, if there's oxygen in the water, and you put ammonia into the water, it's gonna naturally, bacteria and just through chemical processes, it's gonna wanna go to nitrate. It consumes four milligrams per liter of oxygen just to convert one milligram per liter of nitrate to ammonia. So it is so oxygen consuming and it directly impacts the affinity for fish to be able to uptake That's the okay. oxygen. So it's a double whammy, it kills you. It's so toxic to and it's, it's all it's a quick kill, water. right? It's a quick, yeah. Unionized yeah. ammonia, as soon as that spikes, if they're already stressed from turbidity, pH, other things, low, other right. thing that compounds. They're out, they're done. That ammonia out. spikes, they're out, yeah. So they they just explained it. Yeah. 
it was a tipping point. It's a perfect yeah. storm. Yeah. That occurred. Yeah. Yeah. Very. That's fantastic. Fortunate. It's, un it's so unfortunate, the but the it's metaphor, fantastic well, to know. When those cells start to decay, the first thing that gets released is ammonia. It's, ammonia. it's not the reason why you have DO drop is because the ammonia is coming in the water, sucking it out, trying to convert it to nitrate. So it's all it's it's more ammonia related directly than it is the DO. Yeah. DO is a is a is a byproduct of the ammonia. The DO mm -hmm. drop is a byproduct. Mm -hmm. of the, ammonia. the more organics, the more ma decaying material, the higher chances of Ammonia. Yeah, right. Yeah. That just explains it. So I think even more of a reason why on top of the metaflock we're doing the muck biotics to also get rid of a lot of this sediment yeah. that so that you're not having these cycling events that are causing yeah. that to happen too. Perfect storm. We want, we want to be on an Perfect even kill. We don't want, <laughs> you know, we don't want fish to get stressed. We've yeah, had so enough of the roller coaster rod out here. <laughs> So Snakes game plan right is we're going to drive the boat down to where the bags of biotics are on top of that tote of Metaflock and load the bags up and then do the application. Well, I've got to drive this, huh? Oh, hey, it went the right way. When we go, work our way, go back out into the middle. Oh, <laughs> we're going to get it. Covered in sap, we're good to go. <laughs> Let's try this again. <laughs> this is take forever. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take. Use your strong hands, Dad. That? <laughs> oh yeah, look at that perfection. You can always do it on the second one. Woo! Chad and I are out here doing some uh, muck biotics treatments right now. We uh, are applying six 30 pound bags of product. The idea behind doing these treatments is we want to consume as much of the organic material in the pond as possible to cut down on the nutrient loading that's happening within the pond and making it safer for fish and just keeping things cleaner. I'm trying to talk and drive the boat at the same time, which is probably not recommended, but we only hit a few trees, so we're good. Muck pellets, unlike the bacteria that you pour in, yeah. the liquid and it disperses everywhere, the pellets aren't going to move a whole lot. So they're going to have an area of influence and that's where they're uh -huh. going to stay. So getting it distributed throughout the water is important. Important. Mm -hmm. To see the results that you want. Okay. Sometimes people do just choose to treat shoreline areas where they know they're going to be in and out of the water and ignore the rest. And that's, you know, that's fine. It depends on their goals. But okay. in this instance, we want to get all of the sludge out. You know, one pond might react quicker than another. I've had people that tell me they can see results after two weeks with a treatment. Others that it takes six weeks to start noticing it. I think some of it is impacted by the amount of oxygen. Well, I know that's a big factor is the more dissolved oxygen you have, the better the product reacts, but it also can be impacted by the type of sediment that you have. Um, and so everything's a little bit different. I know that we had a project where we applied, a month later we came back and reapplied and did a muck measurement at that one month mark and there was already one to two inches of reduction depth reduction nice in in that little bit of time can't say that's always going to be the case but in general it's a little it, bit more of a yeah. slow burn on it what is it does. yeah okay. but you and it isn't something you know some some people will maybe just choose to do it a couple months a year you're going to see results but the more you do it the more you're going yeah. to achieve um and the other big thing too is that you're always going to have new muck I, I get the question of, okay, so I did it this year. Do I have to do it next year? Well, the leaves are still going to fall in your pond. The fish is still going to poop. Uh, the algae is going to grow and it's going to drop to the bottom. Every year you've got new stuff. So you can either maintain it like you would maintain a car 
you're maintaining your pot. And same thing, keep ahead of it, preventative, so you don't get to a point where it's a big so problem. So the fall would be a good time to sort of put that into your pond management routine. Yeah. The you, addition of muck pellets, because yeah. all the leaves are falling and everything's ending up in the pond. So mm -hmm. that would be like something good they could calendar and mm -hmm. know every year they need to at least do it then. Yeah, if, if nothing else. I mean, we always promote doing it through the year, but uh, now with the new muck remover fall winter that we have it is a hundred percent cold weather bacteria pellet oh, nice. uh, so that is something that's going to perform at its max once the water temperature is below 60 degrees so okay. that wasn't something that was available up until this year nice so at that point normally we would say well you can still treat into fall but the pellets, while they still work, they aren't working as well as they do in the summer months because the majority of the bacteria strains that are in the pond or that are in those pellets are warm water strains. Now we have one that's solely cold water and it's doing big things. So that, mm. that's going to make it a lot a lot easier for people who maybe just want to treat it in the fall. They can do that and see big success. Okay. Can you ever try to do this without having somebody else? Yep. Well, do you feel how smooth that was? It's like I'm a professional boater. Slab Lab 2.0. I can see it. I can feel it. I feel this place in my bones. I literally bleed bluegill at this point. It's in my DNA. Fire in the belly is stoked. I am ready to roll.